Hey family, my name is Chris. I am your Home Gamer Dad, and I welcome you to my first of hopefully many sessions of Final Girl, the solo only survival horror game made by Van Ryder Games. This game is absolutely fantastic. I've played many, many games outside of recording on this, and now I am so happy and so pleased to finally be able to bring it from my table to your eyes for your viewing pleasure. Normally when I start a new game on my channel, I like to do a how to play video, something to kind of give people out there an idea of what's going on and how to go through the game and yada, yada, yada. This game is so popular that you're gonna find a lot of those out on the internet already. And I really just kind of want to jump into the gameplay. However, what I have chosen for this first video is basically the bare bones, simplest way to play the game, the recommended way to play it for all first time players. And in addition to that, I will be doing a light tutorial right in the beginning as well, just to kind of give you an idea of what's what and where things go and how things activate. Also prior to filming this, I had filmed Final Girl Killer Lore, which I highly recommend you guys go watching. It's basically me reading from the lore book and giving you an idea about where some of these killers came from, their mindsets, or just fun stories that are mixed around within and everything. I had a really good time making that episode, and it's it's a fun thing to just listen to. Um, you don't have to watch it because it's all me reading and everything, but I did throw in some graphics and everything in order to try to liven it up a little bit. I say we put our nerves to the test and get ourselves down to the table and figure out how to defeat this walking behemoth of a monster. Ready? Here we go. Hans the Butcher versus Lori in Camp Happy Trails. Welcome, family to Camp Happy Trails, where the horrific Hans the Butcher will be running around slaughtering innocent teenagers and whoever else happens to be there as our final girl, Lori, attempts to thwart his plan, uh, defeat him, knock him out, or just not die herself, because that, of course, is a lose condition if she dies. Uh, this, again, is just going to be... I'm going to do the session, but I'm going to do it in a little bit more detail than normal, uh, just so new people to this can kind of get an idea of how to play. This is the simplest version of the game. Camp Happy Trails has no special rules. Hans has no special rules. Lori is very easy to play as. So this is like a great starter point for the game and a reason why I chose to play this one first. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the setup here. Every one of the locations in Final Girl, which right now there are five, there'll be more coming out, uh, has a set of location cards on them that pretty much show you where the starting position of victims and Final Girl and the killer are. So we are going to shuffle this up and we're going to choose one of them and that is going to be our opening. And we get here. Yeah! Uh, ooh, the bonfire. That's crazy because that means we have a lot of meat bags in one spot. So you're going to be taking these little like yellow meeples here. These would represent uh, camp counselors or teenagers, whoever it is. They sell some pretty cool stickers for these on Etsy. So if you really want to liven your game up, you can buy them. And we're basically going to put them exactly as it shows on the bonfire, as you see down over here as I'm trying to make things a little bit nicer for you guys. So six victims are going to go into the fire pit itself. There is a special card that I can put a symbol on to kind of represent how many characters are in this spot. But for the sake of it all, I'm just going to leave it. Ah, there it is. So everybody's sitting around the fire just waiting for somebody to come get them. We got a victim up over here and then one right over here. Whoop, get back here. And in standard point, we have two people up at make out point, which is grow right up here. Gotta have two people up there. I mean, you can have three, you can have more, you can have as many people as you want at make out point. You know, who am I to tell you how to party? And then we're gonna take Lori, our final girl. Most people don't use the uh, the minis for this, but I really like the minis. I think they're beautiful. I'm not a really good painter, so I just like having them anyway. And I'm gonna lay them down, just kind of leave them that way so you can see them. And then Hans over here, also really, really cool sculpt design. I'm going to show that as another camera in a moment. Uh, he would go up here. So that's the setup for Bonfire. Next, we're going to do the event cards. Again, in every location, you'll find a whole bunch of events. And you're going to know the locations because they have this little symbol on them. Each location has its own unique symbol. So if anything ever gets uh, mixed together or whatever, you can always know exactly where each one goes. And there may be more events that come out through the course of the game, but for right now we have the first one, which is, ooh, girlfriend. She's cute, funny, and the biggest badass I've ever known. 
uh, the victim closest to you is now your girlfriend. She will follow you into the killer's space. Uh, she, while she is in your space, roll plus one dice for each horror roll, which is great. If the girlfriend dies in your space, oh boy, that's a lot of horror. If the girlfriend leaves play, discard this card. So, uh, the closest victim is here. So this would go away, and then this white meeple would go here, and that would be our girlfriend. So our goal first is to get here as fast as possible so we can get that advantage of rolling a third dice, because the more dice you roll in this game, the easier things get. Next, we're going to set up the item decks up here. Uh, again, each location has a whole mess of item cards. So these are all things still located in the location uh, section of uh, whatever fe feature film you bought. And in the bottom right, you're going to see, again, the symbols to be able to match them up. I'm just going to shuffle these up. And then for this, actually, there is a special item that I'm going to put into this. I have Lori's Bow, which is an item that you would get if you beat a game using Lori. I have done this off camera because I like this game and I've played it many, many times and I've unlocked most of these weapons already. So Lori's is going to be shuffled in, but I'm going to shuffle it in this way. What you want to do for here is, there's a lot of items here. You're going to take 12, in this case 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. These all now go back to the box for a later game. And then we're going to take Lori's bow, put it in here, and we're going to shuffle them up. We will then divide these items among the three spaces that we can find items on the board. That would be the cabins, the dock, and the utilities to shed. So that's here, here, and here. We're actually very close to the dock, so hopefully we get something good. And you divide these items up by putting three face down. So we'll just go one, two, three. And then the top item of each deck is uh, going to be face up. Uh, let, me, let me clean that up a bit. There we go. And now we have our three items here. So at the cabins, we will find a first aid kit. At the docks, we will find a flashlight. And at the utility shed, we find a knife. Wow, that is, that is actually all makes complete sense, uh, to be honest with you, on items that are found at those spots. Next, we got to get Hans ready to go. Hans has two different types of cards. He has... A top part, which is his finale, and a bottom part, which is a dark power. The dark power will reveal itself either when the gauge here gets up to this point, or we reveal the finale. So whatever happens first, the dark power will reveal. There are four of each. Uh, there's an epic finale and an epic dark power mixed into these as well. So I'm just going to mix them up, and we're going to see what we can get. The finales are uh, revealed after you have completed your terror deck, which we're going to do next. So... We'll take this, lay that face down right there. Good. And then we have the bottom half, which will go right here, making a complete picture of Hans the Scary Butcher. The rest of those are left to the side. Let's do the terror deck. Both the uh, killers and the location have their own set of terror cards. And you'll again know them by the symbols on the bottom. So that would be for Camp Happy Trails. That would be for Hans. There's a lot of cards here, so what you're going to do is you're going to mix them all together and you're going to deal out 10 cards into a pile. This becomes your terror deck, which is effectively a countdown of sorts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The rest of these go back to the box. Trust me, so much replayability for this game. It's amazing. So basically, again, this is your countdown. Every uh, killer phase, one of these is revealed. When there is no more to reveal, the finale happens, and then every killer phase, the finale triggers. And when this happens, you better watch out because things are going to get dicey. I've already set up the killer board over here with all of Hans's health, so he has 12 health. But if you count here, you may notice there's only 11 hearts. That's because we have these down here. These are like uh, adrenaline or final rush uh, tokens. I, I forget exactly what they're called. But there is a space on the bottom for one of these here. Lori, however, she has five health. I have four hearts here with, again, a space. Basically what these are is this is a chance, possibly at the end of the game, for either the killer or the final girl to come back from a final hit. Most of these are blank, but one has one heart, one has two, and one has three. We don't know what's what, so we're going to do this face down right there, and we're going to take this one face down right here. The rest of these go back to the box. No peeking now. 
and whatever gets revealed, if they get revealed at the end of the game, we will know for sure if either Hans is completely dead on the final blow, or Lori is completely dead on the final attack. The horror level is set to four, which is right here. That's what's said right on top at Hans's uh, uh, board. And then we have our time right here, which is set at six. We're using the normal side of the board. There is a horror side, which makes things a little more difficult. But otherwise that, this is the setup for the main board. Now we go over to the tableau really quickly. These are basically the cards that you're going to be using throughout the course of the game in order to help you do things. And on the bottom shows you the cost for how much each card is. Anywhere from zero all the way up to six for critical blow. At the beginning of the game, you're going to start with these six cards in your hand. These are the zero cost cards. But as you play them, they're going to go back into the tableau for you to pull back later. So you're not going to be able to use a zero cost card, or at least the same zero cost card, every turn. So you play a card, and then at the end of the action phase, it goes back here. Uh, and again, I'll, this will all make more sense as you see me play, but I'm going to take these zero cards into my hand, and with all that said and done, I think we should get this started. A turn in Final Girl is played through a series of five phases, and the first phase is the action phase, which we are going to be using our cards in our hand for. Cards I have are Walk, which enable you to move various spaces, Focus, which enables me to lower the horror gauge here, thus enabling me to play more dice, which is amazing. A short rest, which could be a healing card or a card that I can just kind of throw out for extra time or uh, a success. And a weak attack. Of course, it is what it is as a weak attack. Thing to note about the weak attack is this little X down here. If I completely fail this, my turn immediately ends, or I should say the action phase immediately ends. So, with that in mind, uh, the goal of the game is, of course, to defeat Han, to knock him down to zero. But in order to do that, we have to help out all the other victims that are on the field. Because they're all kind of scattered or clumped together, Hans is going to come down here and basically make a slaughter fest out of this. Almost guaranteed. Um, I need to get to the girlfriend as fast as possible in order to be able to roll those dice. The issue is, is when you move other people, um, uh, what is it? Uh, only one will follow you. Well... To follow you at any time, I want the girlfriend to always follow me, so I can only really move one person at a time. My goal in order to save people is to get them to these spots that have this little door on them. Those little doors basically mean that they have been rescued, they can move out of the game, and I can move them over to Lori's card over here in order to power her up. Once she has all six spaces filled, she has rescued six people, this flips over and she gets a much better ability. So with that said, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play a walk card. We'll put that down here as our active card. Now, anytime you do anything in this game, you need to make a horror roll, and that is where the dice come in. It's a six-sided die, but the die sides are a little different. One and two are blank. That is a complete miss. Three and four have these two card symbols on it. Basically, that means I can spend two cards from my hand in order to make it a success, and five and six show these stars, which are successes. That's what we want, because any stars actually give us the ability to do what it is that we want to do. So I'm going to play this, and we're going to kind of roll around here right in the front. Roll it out here. I have one success, and I have one... Uh, uh, I can trade in two cards to make that a success. I'm actually going to get rid of the two cards, because I want to try to get over to the girlfriend as fast as possible. So I'm going to discard Short Rest and Weak Attack. I'm just going to put them under here because I don't need them anymore. This is like a discard pile of sorts. And I'm going to turn this into a success. So now I get to move two. One, two. So now I'm in the space with the girlfriend, which is amazing. And then I lose one time. So this goes down from six to five. If I ever lose all my time, the action phase immediately ends. So now that I have here with my girlfriend, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to play a focus card. Focusing will again move this up, and if I can get it to one of these green sections, I get another die. So that would be four dice I'd be rolling. So for right now, we're going to have three dice, and we're going to see what we can roll. Here we go. All right, so we'll just kind of roll it. All right, so I got one success, another I can discard two cards, and then a complete um, miss. 
So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the one star uh, success, which would lower the horror gauge by one, so it goes to three, and I lose one time. If I had chosen to discard two guards to give myself a second success to make it, you know, a, cr a critical success in a sense, then I would have gained two times, so it would have been at seven, and that would have been great in order to spend cards on, but I still have a walk and a focus in my hand that I want to use for next turn. You don't have to spend all the cards in your hand on your turn. Your hand limit is 10, so keep that in mind. With that said, I'm going to end the action phase, and now we're going to go over to the planning phase, which is over in the tableau. I have four time that I can spend over here, and from that I can use in order to buy any one of these cards. I'm definitely going to take one sprint for two, so that's uh, two of my four time. And then I'm actually going to take, both of these close calls are one uh, time apiece. And basically that means I can re-roll any one die, or if I lose two time, I can re-roll all of them. Dice mitigation is very key for this game because it enables you to do more stuff. So I'm just going to take both of these. That ends the planning phase. So then I can go ahead and take all of these cards that I used my last turn. They're all zero, so I'm just going to put them all into this pile right here. If they were different times, then they would be spread out. But I can't bring these back to my hand until the end, uh, or until my next planning phase. And then also my time is set back to six. So with that said, Lori has taken her first move. She is done now. Now the killer goes. So we're going to first go with the killer phase. We're going to look up here in the upper corner and see what his abilities are. Hans targets either the final girl or a victim and attacks. He does not move. If he moved, there would be a little boot icon. So he's basically staying right here in this spot and just swinging around his, his hammer wildly. Next, we're going to go to the tarot deck itself and flip it over to the first card. Let's go see if the rumors are true. Place two new victims in the space where the killer started the game. Uh-oh. Uh, raise the horror level and flip another event. Oh boy, this is not going to end very well because these two guys are right here and Hans is there and he is going to kill them next turn. The horror level then goes down one, so it's back to four, and we're going to flip another event. I'm actually going to move these down a little bit so we have some room for it. And the next event is Death Wish. Oh, God. During uh, upkeep phase, move the victim closer to the killer one space towards it. Do not count victims currently in the same space as the killer. Are you kidding me? Why? Why would you do this? Oh, this is, this is why I love this game. This is such a horror trope. Why would you walk towards the killer? Uh, I'm going to get a better look even if it kills me. That's true. Panic phase would be the fourth phase in which all the victims would scatter around, but that only happens if somebody is killed in a turn. No one is killed. So we move to the upkeep phase where various things might happen. I can rearrange any items I have, but in this case, death wish happens, um, which is actually, when you're counting spaces, you're counting available spaces. So make out point is way far away. It's actually one, two, three, four, four space, one, two, three, four, five spaces. I'm sorry, five spaces away from the killer. Whereas these guys are like one or two. So I'm going to take this dude and move him right there because he apparently has a death wish. And with that said and done, we're now back up to the action phase. So Lori is going again. We need to move. We need to do something really, really fast. So I'm going to immediately do sprint here and that'll enable me to move up the three spaces. If I can, I can go one, two, and then bring that guy down here for three and at least save him before the stupid person has his own death wish. So... Come on, come on, double success, double success. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, oh no, oh no. All right, I'm gonna try my close call and I'm gonna spend two time in order to re-roll them all and hope for the best here. I hate when I hit things and they go off center. Come on, give me some successes, some successes. Uh, I got one success, that's that. Eh, let's go for it. Try another close call, I'll only roll one dice this time. Give me a success, nope, it's a fail. All right, well, that was silly. Um, all right, so we'll go one, two. Come on, girlfriend, with me. I at least still have uh, a walk. So these have been used. They're over there. So at least I have a walk. If I can roll one star out of this, then I have f fulfilled what it is I wanted to do for this turn, and I have rolled a star. Awesome. Cool. So with that, Lori, her girlfriend, and this victim will move down here, and whenever you bring a victim into a space with one of these little doors, you may choose to rescue that victim. So I am going to rescue this victim. Now I could send the girlfriend away, but that's gonna then you know hinder me as like one less dice for the rest of the game. So I'm actually gonna keep her with me for right now. 
And what we can do then, with Lori's card, I can then choose to place this victim on any one of these open meeple spots in order to be able to activate the ability. And I'm actually going to put it on one of these two uh, time ones in order to gain back the two time I lost for using that stupid reroll from before. And just because I can, I have my last focus card right here, which I'm going to use. I'm going to roll the three dice and hope to either A, get more time, or B, which is more important, lower the count. So here we go. All right, so that's fine. It's one success, so I lose one time, and this goes to three. So as long as I keep that high, I think I'm okay. Planning phase with five uh, time in order to spend, I get all of these cards back, which is great. So we'll just do that just so I know to bring these to my hand. So now I have five in order to, to uh, do something with. I'm going to take a distraction, which as you can see is very helpful because I'll be able to uh, lower the uh, horror by at least two, one, gaining time. It's, distractions are great cards to have. And then I'm going to take this sprint with me uh, because movement is key. So these come to my hand. And then the ones that I use this turn go here. So all the zeros I'll place. There's a sprint and then blow both close calls for me to possibly purchase uh, in the next round. So this is going to get very messy by the end of the game, so I apologize for that. Okay, now we get to see what Hans does. Hans is going to go stabby, stabby, stab and uh, kill one of these victims uh, right in this area. So we take one and we put it down here in the dead section as the victim has died, and the bloodlust meter goes up one. As you can see, Hans then gets various ability uh, increased as he goes along, damage output and movement. He'll also create more terror, and eventually he will unlock his dark power. So you don't want this going up, and it only goes up because of uh, victims dying, basically. And again, that includes any victim that dies. Even if it doesn't happen by Hans, as long as a victim dies, this goes up. Anyway, here we go. Let's do the terror card. Uh, I fell asleep. What did I miss? Place one new victim in the cabin. Why? Why are these people here? And this goes down by two. Oh, no. All right, so cabin's right here. Another victim. More meat bags. Uh, this is not going to end very well. And then this goes to five. Oh, no. Good thing I bought that distract. What's even worse is that this apparently person right here has a death wish. So they're going to go like this, right up to Hans, because reasons. Oh, man, this is exactly like a horror movie. Amazing. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm definitely going to play. I'm, I'm going to do distract and focus eventually, but I'm going to do a uh, sprint first and just try to get some movement going. Uh, I don't know exactly where I'm going, but I know I need to go somewhere. Uh, all right, double success. I like double successes. So that means I get to move three spaces. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and with the girlfriend go one, two, three. So now we're all in the bonfire together. So we're rushing in and saying, oh, my God, there's a killer on the loose. Everyone run. And they're looking at me like, ah, uh, you're an idiot. You know, that, as would be the case. So now we're going to try to walk out with uh, some people. So if I can get uh, a critical uh, success on this walk, I can at least walk one more victim over here and get them out. So this is going to take a little while going back and forth with just the girlfriend, but at the very least, I can um, hopefully get a lot of people out of here. Wow! What the? Holy jeez, that's amazing. I wish there was a three-star success on this one, but there are cards that have a three-star success, but they're in other feature films. All right, so obviously we'll go one, two, you're following me, and then another victim will come one, two, and we will save a second victim. This one I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on, uh, take an action card of two or less. So I get a free action card to my hand of any one card, two or less. And I'm actually going to take a search card because in order to defeat the uh, main villain, it's great to have great items in your hand. Uh, so these are what you need in order to find the stuff that are in like the various locations and your item cards. Plus I really need to find her bow. I don't have any other movement cards or anything, so we're there. So I might as well go ahead and just start lowering that. Let's use Distraction. This is where I wish I had the, the three star. Um, but I want the most stars possible out of this. Oh, no. Oh, boy. All right, well, tossing my short rest and my weak attack here underneath in order to turn this into a success, which will give me back one time and lower this by one. I'll then go ahead and use the focus and hope for the best here. Uh, there we are. I like it. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's perfect. 
lower this by one, so now we're back here, and I gain two time, so now I go into the planning phase with eight time to spend. Fantastic. Let's move these down and go ahead and do that. All right, all of these, uh, there's only two. There's a walk and a focus, but that's fine. So now I have eight in order to spend. So I'm gonna grab this. So now I have six to spend. I'm gonna take a distraction and I'm gonna take this improvise. Improvise is fun because until the next, until the action phase ends, it's either the next horror roll or all horror rolls, threes and fours count as successes. So all of that means that if I get a critical success for this, then I will have the greatest chance possible to make an all of these successful. You use this at the beginning of the turn. So hopefully next round I can use that and then get some good stuff. And then one there, I'll put the distraction over here. There's a walk, there's a sprint, weak attack and short rest, all for the next planning phase. All right, Hans, kill away. You're, you are a one dead meeple, that's for sure. One of you two are, he's just standing there and just knocking them down one by one. Move this up, and unfortunately, because we hit this threshold, we gain another terror. Oh boy, he doesn't even move, and he's just causing havoc. All right, next terror card. He wants fresh blood. If there are no victims on the board, there are. He targets, he moves, and he attacks. So he's targeting a victim, which he's already in in one, actually. Uh, he doesn't need to move, but if he would, he would have moved twice. So that would have given him uh, two spaces of movement based on the... Uh, uh, the, the, the number of uh, spaces he can move on the board here, and he attacks. So he is going to kill that victim, which is right next to him. Skirplat, you're done. Goodbye. And then that moves up again. His stats haven't increased yet. They're going to increase. Uh, and when they do, they're going to be terrible. But for right now, he's still only moving one space and doing two damage. Uh, so now we need to start really rescuing people, because uh, he's going to start moving next turn, I bet, and it's going to be terrible. So now that we're in the upkeep phase, the death wish activates, and this one lonely camper was like, oh, Lori, she's such an idiot. Do you believe all that? I'm going to go prove her wrong. And he's going to move one space. He or she, whoever, is going to move one space closer to the victim because these are technically closer. I'm sorry, closer to the killer because these are technically closer to Hans compared to Make Out Point, who are still all the way up around here. These two are just, just making babies all night, so they're, they're probably just going to stay there and do whatever they need to do. But we are going to improvise. So I'm going to roll and I'm going to hope for as many stars as I can uh, because we need to make sure that threes and fours also counts as successes. So here we go. Oh, that's, oh, that stinks. Oh, man. Just so I have it, I'm going to go ahead and toss this focus and walk in order to make this a success because otherwise I would have raised the horror level by one and lost the time. At least I don't lose anything and my next card I play Threes and fours count as successes. Ah, that's that's terrible. I'm actually just going to use the distract then. I would rather have threes and fours as successes for that in order to be able to get what I need. Um, so I get one success. Hooray! Yay! Down one, up one. I forgot to reset that back to six. Uh, so technically I was at six. I gained one from distract. Hooray. All the rest are all the same. So let's go ahead and sprint. We'll roll these three dice and we get... Uh, absolutely nothing. So I could move one space, lose a heart, lose two time, and my turn immediately ends. Or I lose a heart and I lose two space, uh, two time. Um, I'm going to use the top one because I can connect from here to the dock. So this way I can look for something next turn. Because unfortunately, my turn immediately ends. So that goes up. I lose two time. Come here. And Lori apparently tripped over a branch or got her self stuck on something, maybe whatever the sword is she's carrying, it got jabbed into her and lost a health on the way there. But again, that ends the action phase, so these would all go back, but first let's go ahead to the planning phase and buy some stuff with our five time. All right, we got all these coming back to our hand. I like having close calls, so I'm gonna take both of these, so now I have three time to work with. Uh, and then I'm going to take, actually I'm gonna put back one of these close calls I'm going to take a sprint for two, and then I'm going to take another search card just to try to get as many items as possible. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards to my hand. It would be eight with the search card that's already there, and then these can go back. So sprint, distract, improvise, and then the two zero cards uh, for the next round. Good. Hans actually doesn't kill anybody this turn. Hooray, that's great. 
but now we flip another terror card. So here we go. Hiya. What's that noise? Let's go and see. If there are no victims on the card, there are, there are victims, so it doesn't matter. All victims move one space towards the closest enemy. Will you stop it? What? Ah! All right. Um, okay, so everybody moves one space. Well, you go here. They're like, hey, search party time. We'll move here. And the makeout point people are rolling around, and now they're rolling down the cliff, apparently. Um, that's, that's terrible. I don't think, does the girlfriend count? I think she is a victim, though, right? Yeah, so she would actually move, which stinks because now she's moved out of my space, so I would lose a die for my next round. Uh, that stinks. Uh, so now the killer will focus on somebody in the space and attack. No one there. However, now he will focus on a victim and move. So Hans, as I predicted, has moved down one space. You are going to be slaughtered by your next turn. This is a final girl or, um, what is that, final girl or a victim. Uh, he would just target whoever is closest, always prioritizing the victims. Remember, anything Hans does generally always prioritize the victim. If you happen to be in a situation where you don't know what the best choice is, there are several rules in the rule book that like rule of horror, rule of fun, you know, things along that ways that you can kind of go with. Uh, I try to go with whatever the villain would do uh, that would be the worst for everybody. But I'm not in that position right now. No, the position I'm in right now is the closest person has to go up to Hans, so you are also in there. I can't believe that all these people just want to die. Why Why do you want to die? I'm not going to have anybody for Lori to rescue. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and sprint. I don't get a die, so i got to move that out of the way. Um, I will go ahead and roll these two dice. Uh, do I want to roll? Yeah. Um, you know what? No, 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 no. Walk. Walk. Walking is better. Because at least one uh, success, which I hope I get, I do, that's sweet, sorry Lori, uh, will move me to here and only lose one time. I'm back to five anyway. So now I have three dice once again. And from there we will sprint. So now I have the most dice I possibly could in order to uh, sprint away and heal or do something. Uh, come. Uh, Using two time in order to re-roll everything. This is the problem with this game, is the luck of the roll. Ah, uh, there we are. Double success. Beautiful. Put this on the bottom just so I know what I'm doing. All right, so I can move up the three spaces. I'm just going to lose the time right now, and then I can move up the three spaces. So we'll move one. We'll move back for two. And we'll move into the exit for three, getting rid of this victim, saving them. And I'm going to put it on the move one space spot right here. So this way I can move Lori and the girlfriend back to the docks for free. I will then play a search card, which is probably one of the last things I'm going to play because I'm running out of time, uh, in order to hopefully get something good from the docks. Uh, okay. All right, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to toss all four cards in my hand. Yeah, I know, it seems silly to do, but I want to try to do it. So that's a uh, double success. So basically what this means is I can take the top two cards from the deck, and I choose one, I place the other uh, top face up or underneath face down. So we have one, two, and this second card is... Oh my god, it's Lori's bow! So Lori's bow is coming to us. That is a two-handed weapon. That's going to be something awesome to do. Um, place the other on top face up or underneath face down. Uh, flashlight. Now nah, I'm just gonna put you on the bottom. I don't think I need anything else from that. So you're gonna go here. That's fine. And that actually is going to end uh, the action phase because I don't have anything else to do. I also only have two times, so I'm gonna take these and I'll take a sprint. And uh, that's gonna be all I can do next round. A lot of zero cost cards are going in. Got the close call. Uh, sprint and my searches go Back. So I have a lot to choose from next round, uh, but I also don't have many actions that I can do. Hans is going to do what he does best, and that's take his hammer and whack it against the closest meatbag that's here. So goodbye. You go down here. This goes up one, and the horror level goes here. Remember, panicking doesn't happen until the end of the killer's phase. So Hans has done his due diligence, and now we're going to flip this over. Ah. Oh. Minor Dark Power, Unholy Rage. Hans does an additional damage for each uh, attack. Basically, the Unholy Rage then goes up here to the top of Hans, uh, Hans's uh, board, and he has now increased his health by two. When I deal damage to him, this is going to be the first thing I have to hit. I have to hit the dark Minor Dark Powers. 
Um, but as soon as I knock both of these health off, this card is gone. So that's that's a great thing. Um, it's just more health that I got to deal with than this already tank of a creature. And now we do the panic phase, which is the first time we're doing it here. So basically, if a victim was killed in a spot where there's another victim, uh, all the other victims would then, I would roll a dice, and whatever number shows up, it, it might be a little hard to see, but there's numbers all along a lot of these spaces. If there is, uh, if you roll a number and it's not there, then the victim would stay in place. But in this case, we have one to three, uh, four, five, and six. So I'm going to roll. I rolled a three. So this guy runs back over here to his friends and says, oh my God, Lori was right. We're all going to die. All right. Speaking of Lori, uh, we're going to go ahead and start up our next uh, action phase. There would normally be little like spot things here that go on the Lori's bow. I'll I'm going to get that in between like in, in a moment. I, I just got to get him out of the box. But I'm not ready to fire this off yet anyway. I still need to save people. So let's go ahead and sprint on over, try to gain, get another victim out of here. Um, depending on what I roll, I may do something crazy, but we'll see what I roll. All right, so with that said, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to do something completely crazy and off the wall. I'm going to spend these two cards, plop them right now. I know it's a walk and a focus, but I'm going to make this a success. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to move three spaces. This actually got reset back to six. I always forget to do that. That's I need to remember to do that. Um, and I'm going to go... I'm going to leave my girlfriend behind in the dock. One, two, and I'm going to take two victims and move them down uh, for my third movement. And hopefully next turn I can get something good in order to bounce into here, save both of them, and then back up to my girlfriend. So that's, uh, that's, that's literally all I can do this round. Uh, just kind of pull more victims away from Hans in the hopes that uh, he kind of just focuses on the one and leaves all the rest alone. Though what I could do... Before anything else, I put the little notches to here on Lori's bow, as you see. So the way Lori's bow reads is, Lori cannot modify an action card and must use without one. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to do it yet. Uh, it does one damage. I can just spend a time and get rid of one of these and fire a, a shot from up to three spaces away right at Hans. The thing is, I know Lori's special power, and I'd rather wait to try to unlock that. It's possible. It's very possible for me to unlock that, especially with these two lovebirds up here, far away from Han. So we're going to leave it at that, and we're going to go using... Um, I did lose one time because I sprinted, uh, and now we're going to go and get some cards. All right, five cards to work with. I have these, which will help immensely. Again, we're going to sprint, so that's that. Um, I don't want to do any type of distraction or anything like that now. I am going to, it's one, two, uh, to, to, to three, and I'm going to then grab a search card, just so I can possibly search more places uh, up higher on the map uh, rather than uh, just at the dock. If I can get to the utility shed and get that knife, that'll help as well. Focus walk, go back, and then the other sprint card. So I always have a movement. The way I like to play this is I always like to have a movement card here, so this way my final girl always has a way of getting around the board. So, yeah, that's a thing. Alright, Mr. Hans here does not actually attack anybody this turn. Finally, we get a little bit of a breather, but that doesn't mean that something... Oh, uh, uh, you know what I forgot to do last turn? I forgot to do at the end... Did I forget to do at the end of the last turn? I might have forgotten to do at the end of the last turn. I'm going to say I forgot to do it at the end of the last turn, and that's move somebody into Hans's space. Um, if I did do it, then I'm just making this harder for myself, um, but I'm pretty sure I forgot to do the death, death wish. So we're going to do that. Unfortunately, as we do know, that means you're dead. This moves up, and the dark power is now revealed, which is da -da -da, dark obsession. Uh, whenever Hans attacks you at least once, he Oh, God. So now he's doing multiple attacks. That's really not fun. Oh, no. All right. So well, now what happens? Um, Dark Feast. This goes up one. For every victim that is dead, Han recovers a health, which on a positive point is fine because nothing was taken away from him. Mind you, he would have gained a lot of health right there, but... Uh, I think I am okay, which is which which is the way it needs to be. 
What's not okay is this jerk decides, oh no, I forgot something. I need to run back and get it. So now I am short one victim from this area. Great, you dummy. All right, I think we're all good. Uh, guys out there, let me know if there was anything else that happened. I, I, I know I'll catch it during editing or whatever. Uh, but for right now, I think we're doing pretty well. I am going to go ahead and we're just going to do a basic walk once again. So I get only two dice because my girlfriend's up here in the dock. Hopefully this will help. Uh, I get to toss two cards in order to make a success. Well, weak attack and short rest. These are great cards in order to burn right in the beginning of the game in order to make sure you have those successes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move up to the docks with these people, uh, with this one uh, victim and my girlfriend. Possibly do another search up here. I put the flashlight on the bottom of the deck, so we'll see what's up there. So let's go ahead and do that search. I walked, so I lost the time, so we're back to five. I'm now going to do another search with three dice because my girlfriend is in the same space as me. Oh, beautiful. Awesome success right there. So now we can take these two cards and see what the last two items in the dock are. First one, lucky dice, and the next one, trash can lid. So I can't exactly take the trash can lid because my bow is two-handed, so I need a hand for both of them, even though I'm probably gonna use most of it. Um, but at least the trash can lid I can ignore damage for, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, as for this, discard to re-roll any or all of your dice. I'm actually gonna take the lucky dice because I'm rolling a lot of dice and I'd rather have the dice mitigation in order to be able to do something. We're gonna put the, the trash can lid face up here just so I know what that is uh, if I need anything else. And now we're going to sprint. I'm gonna to try to get this one victim, come back here, uh, out of this area. This guy's a lost cause. I can't do anything about it. So my goal now is to get this guy out and then start running upwards towards the utility shed, uh, get these two losers out of here, and then uh, to see what I can grab from the utility shed. Ah, oh, man. So I have the time from uh, from uh, searching that I forgot to do. I'll do the close call to spend two time. Uh, you know what? One, uh, let's 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 yeah. Let, let's let's use the lucky dice and just roll them all. Why not? This comes back to my hand. Why why use the card when I don't have to? Right? Uh, because I'm gonna need to use the card. That was wasteful. One two. And I have two. I I really need a good success here. Come on, something. Oh you. Uh. Well, as the way it would be, I'm just going to go ahead and move one space here. I lose two time, so I immediately, I have no time to spend. You're at least saved, which is good. I'm going to put you on to the lower the uh, horror level by one, just because that's getting a little high. So we're going to lower that by one, and uh, my turn immediately ends, or at least the action phase does. I have no time to spend, but at least I get these two back to my hand, because they are zero-cost cards. I'm gonna put that there, sprint, search, and then all of the rest of my zeros here. All right. Now I know Hansi Kins is fine, because now no, he wouldn't have moved into here, so that does nothing. So let's go ahead and draw the next terror card. He just keeps coming. That's true. He does. So this goes here. Hans will move here and look at this guy in the face ah! and rip out his eyeballs, basically. You are off the board, added to the pile of decaying flesh that is piling up apparently all over this camp. And this goes up one. So there we go. That's a thing. But he's still far enough away from us where I think I can make my way up and around, save these two, uh, activate Lori's ability because that's going to really be very helpful with Lori's bow. So now these two guys are technically the closest. So uh, someone's going to just branch off from the two and get a little bit... Well... <sighs> Technically, the girlfriend is closest, so maybe she's like, hey, I'm going to go and try to help out. Um, she's a victim. She is a victim, right? So technically, she would go here, and like maybe something's drawing her to Hans or something like that. But in either event, that's, that's not a good thing. We have now lost a dice because we have lost her, um, and I don't really have much. I have a walk. I can walk. That's the best I can do. Um, I can do a lot of focuses, which I'm going to try to do as well, but I'd rather attempt to walk and save her. Oh no. Oh, that stinks. Um, I can still move. Let's put you back to six. I can still move one space. I can lose a health and I lose two time. So now I'm in the same space as her. Uh, I do get my dice back. Uh, let's just do some manic focusing. So we're going to do one focus with three dice. Come on, baby. All right. So I get 
Uh, one success. I only have one card in my hand, so it doesn't really matter. So that'll go down. That'll go down. And the other card actually is a focus. So we're going to go ahead and roll that like so. And we get another success. So that goes up and that goes down down. So I spent a lot of time because she decided to play a hero when you needed to stay by my, honey, stay by my side. What are you doing? Why? 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 It's okay. I got this. I got this. I only got two to spend. So I'm going to take all these and I'm going to take, not a search, I'm going to take a sprint in order to be able to move as much as I can next turn and hopefully put some distance between me and the pig man. And then all of these uh, zero cost cards go back. Speaking of which, Hans doesn't do anything because he's right here. And now the terror card flips. We're coming to the end. Uh, another he just keeps coming. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's really bad because he's going to move down in here. And Hans will always, always prioritize victims no, 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 over no, anything no, else. No. So her trying to be the hero means that Hans has come in and slaughtered her. He has killed the girlfriend. So now a lot of bad things, a couple of things are going to happen and they're all going to be very, very, very bad at this point. Um, first off, this goes up and this goes up. Um, I have to put this up. I think I did that already. It doesn't, it re, you know what? It really doesn't matter because the girl, girlfriend is killed. So it's one, two, three, four, five. This is automatically up here. And then for every one that it would try to do this, the bloodlust would go up. So one, two, three, four. It's at the height. It's at the highest it can go. So now Hans is doing five damage uh, and moving three spaces a turn. I only get one dice now because I'm at the very bottom of this. I am in trouble. I am in trouble. Uh, if this were to go up any higher, it would loop back around and Hans would recover health. All the killers do different things if this ever gets as high as it does. Um, I am in trouble. Oh, no, I am in trouble. And now this person would go here because of the stupid death wish. This is actually gone now. Uh, because the girlfriend is gone. That's a great card, but oh boy, that did not work out at all. Sprinting time, sprinting time with one dice. This is going to be bad. This is so going to be bad. Oh no. Oh no, that's bad. That's bad. I don't have anything to mitigate it either. Oh no. I, I have to put a little bit of space between us. I'm going to go to the lake. Uh, I'm going to lose a health. I'm going to lose two time, and that's going to be the end of my phase. Because uh, I, I need to do, I have to get away from him. Four time is great to spend. I got all these. I got this. And I'm going to take a guard. Because Hans is now going to start coming after me. And if he comes after me, I can use the guard in order to protect myself. And only sprint goes back. I'm not ready to start shooting him with my bow yet. Because I'd like to get this. But at this point, I don't even know if that's going to happen. Anywho, Hans doesn't move anywhere. That's fine. This can go back up to six finally. Because I may need to spend time if I'm playing guard. I have eight cards in my hand for anybody out there curious. Uh, and now we flip this one. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. So Hans is going to move. He's going to prioritize victims. So he's actually going to move right past me. Uh-oh. He moves right past me, kills this dude, moves again, <laughs> and kills this one. Oh, he keeps swinging his hammer and killing and killing and killing. Wow! Okay, so Hans has single-handedly wiped out the entire board, and I am now stuck here uh, with nothing but my wits and a single dice unless I start pulling this back up. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, there are no more victims, so I can completely forget about Death Wish, but I'm going to leave it there in case other things pop up. I really wish I could have activated Laura's ability, but that's not happening. Instead, I'm going to just do a focus first in hopes to get a star so I can roll some dice. Nope, so I lost two time, crud. Take two, take two, take two. Okay, I can discard two cards. Short rest and weak attack, gone. To make that a success, <laughs> to put that up here and drop down. Hooray, I get another dice. And then I'm going to go ahead and use two of these. So that's two shots from Lori's arrow. You know, let's just do all three. Let's just fire it off, boom, boom, boom. So it's one, two, three. So that's all the rest of my time. She can't go anywhere. She can't do anything. But now I have done three damage to Hans, which is one, two. So this is gone, and this is gone. So that's helpful. That's, that's out of here. I'll just leave that here. And then another health. At least I get knocked out one health from his, uh, from his massive amount of supply here. I'm also just going to discard this because I've used it, and that's kind of the end of it for the turn. Okay, wonderful. So now that ends the action phase, and I am in a lot of trouble. 
I have no time to spend. I have no zero cost cards. But at least next turn, I'll have a lot of zero cost cards and hopefully will not die. So let's see what happens. Hans doesn't do anything because he's right here. This is the last terror card. As soon as this resolves and finishes, I flip the finale. Oh boy. Uh, oh no. Uh, if there are no victims on the board, discard this uh, and draw the next tarot card. Okay, okay. Not good, but it is what it is. There's no more tarot cards. So we go over here to the finale. Oh, bloodbath. Oh, no. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, I don't think this activates. I'm going to say this does not activate because there's no more tarot cards to draw. But on my next turn, he's going to move to me. Uh, when Hans attacks you at least once, he attack he's gonna attack me three times. Oh God, he's gonna attack me three times. God, and his movement is three, and I can't do anything about that. I can run away as much as I can. Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Even if I'm up here, he can he can get me no matter what. Uh, put this back at six. I am here. Uh, what I may want to do, you know what? Let's have him come to me. I'm going to have him come to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of doing any actions at all, I'm going to discard these three cards here, and each one will gain me an additional time. So I'm going to go in to the planning phase with nine time. So I'm going to get a retaliate for four, five, six for a guard, take all of these, and I'm going to take a distraction for seven, eight, nine in order to hope I can build up the... Uh, uh, the the focus or the uh, what is it the uh, terror gauge again? Put my walks and my sprint back. All right, resetting this back to six. I have now ended my phase. Here comes Hans. He's going to go one, two. He's going to hit me three times for five damage a piece. I have one, two, three things that could possibly stop it. So first things first, we're going to play the first guard. Here we go. He's hitting me for five damage. I reduce it by, by two. That's still three damage. Take a short rest and weak attack to turn that into a success. I ignore all damage. So attack number one has been blocked. I'm dead. I'm basically dead. Or attack number two, unless I rolled two uh, stars. Uh, oh, God, I rolled two stars. Okay, attack number two. Done. All right, retaliate. Um, at least maybe I can do some damage back to him. So let's see what happens. Uh-oh. I'm going to get rid of my two focus. Uh, he does three damage to me. I do one damage to him, so that's fun. So this goes back here. Yeah, take that. So here we go. Final thing. He does one, two. This is it right here. If there is a heart on the other side of this, we continue the game. If there is not, Lori is dead. And we have lost. Three, two, one. We are dead. This round goes to Han. Sorry, Lori. <laughs> you got beaten by this massive pig face mask wearing cretin who probably is eating you right now because that's apparently what he does. Oh, man. Dude, he just slaughtered so much and as you can see in the world of final girl things can take a turn real fast because as soon as he killed the girlfriend that was it that was game over for me the moment he killed the girlfriend i think it overall went very well i'm very satisfied with the way it all went even though i lost but i really put up a fight right there at the end i tried my best to try to rescue as many people as possible i would have been able to probably unlock Lori's special ability which by the way, if you don't know and you're curious about knowing, spoiler right now, uh, if you unlock her special ability, she does an additional point of damage for every time she does damage. So Retaliate would have went up one. I was waiting to use the bow and arrow because that means the bow and arrow would have done two points of damage per shot instead of just one. So there was a lot there that worked with her in order to be able to do as much damage to this guy. And Hans has the most health out of any of the killers right now. So you want to really lay it on to him thick uh, as soon as you can. Uh, especially if he has any dark powers. I can't wait until season two comes out. That's going to be so amazing. And maybe by the time season two comes out and I make a few of those, I'll be big enough on YouTube and you guys will like me enough and Van Rydo Games will be like, hey, 
guess what we're doing for season three and then hopefully get me in the mix you know we'll see we'll see how things go down the line and everything that's of course you know crossing fingers for the future and whatnot you guys have been amazing as always thank you so so much take care of yourselves and each other we are family forever gaming together final girl is possibly one of the best solo games i have ever played in my life and i can't wait to play more of it both for you and for myself and for anybody else out there you know and if you if you really are, are interested in it, I highly recommend checking it out, picking it up, or anything along that way. So, until the next time, you guys take care, and I'll see you then. Uh, poor Lori. We'll get him next time. We'll get him next time.